Before we start the Youth Parliament for 2017, I thought I would just give a few words on how important this day is because each year when we have this day, we culminate with three projects that we, um, we execute throughout the year by our 20 chapters, our three university chapters, um, our chapters all over the world. Oh, five. Five university chapters. Sorry, it's always updating, so I have to keep tabs. Um, so, yeah, so I just wanted to give some background to what the Youth Parliament means for IU. Um, how many of you have never come to the retreat before? Just raise your hand. Okay, yeah. So you're going to want to hear this, because it's an important day. And I'm, we're really happy to welcome you this year. So, all of you know what IU is. If you don't, you're in the wrong place. Just let you know that. <laughs> Okay, so this was us last year. We're going to recreate this photo, so everyone stick around. We're going to recreate it with all of our volunteers. Um, but yeah, basically Ayub is the, uh, just for our parents and older people in the room to understand, um, it's the youth wing of embracing the world. So um, a few years back, around four years back, we really wanted to focus our efforts in the United States. Um, and we thought the next generation is where we can really look to the future um, to continue embracing the world and to hear the voices of young people. So we started Ayud, um, and we've had this annual youth summit for the past four years. And each year it's expanding so much. This year, I think 45% of our participants are new, like we just saw. So each year we're expanding so much, and we learn each year from the past year. So I just want to thank you guys so much for helping us in all of that. So Ayud so is all around the world. Um, you can see India up there, you see Europe on the left. Kenya on the right. I think that's Shantamrit Goswami, actually. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> He's playing soccer. playing soccer with Kenya. <laughs> um, and so we're the um, America's chapter. Um, and we are comprised of the United States, Costa Rica, Mexico, Brazil, Chile. Um, here we have representatives from Cuba. We have a representative from Kenya. So we're expanding always. Last year we heard from representatives from Japan. Um, but yeah, we're focused in the United States um, and South America and Middle America. Um, and our four uh, pillars are social service, personal empowerment, green initiatives, and intercultural exchange. Um, and so we try to incorporate these pillars in every project that we do. Um, and here you'll see a photo of us. This was actually at the Commission on the Status of Women at the United Nations. Um, Ayut was invited. Um, and so we had the opportunity to sit with um, youth delegates from all around the world, from organizations just like us, who are trying to incorporate youth voice in these big issues that we're seeing. And so when we go to these conferences, we tell them about these conferences and we relay all the messages we're hearing from you. So that's why it's really important to just speak your heart out today so we can always just bring that message back to the United Nations, bring that message back to all of our initiatives um, and to everyone we can to really hear the youth voice. So here we are, the annual youth parliament. And so that was last year. We see the epic stage design and now we have a new epic stage design. Thanks to Brahmachari Ramanan. And so last year we heard from youth all around the world um, and we came up with some initiatives. So we voted on the SDGs just like we're voting today, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and so our projects last year, we split up into three working groups, which is what we're going to do today. And we design our projects around these SDGs based on the thoughts of all of our members. So we, today we'll be, you'll hear more about it, but we're hearing all from our members. And then we're going to split up into groups and go over the logistics of the projects that we'll be, we will be planning for the year to come. And you guys should know this by now, but these are the SDGs. So that's what we asked you about in your application and what we're going to be hearing about today. So I just wanted to give you some background on the projects that I has initiated, initiated um, over the past two years. Um, so this is Ayud Nurturing Nature, um, and this was a commitment to plant 500 trees. Um, I'm sorry, the graphic is constantly updating because we have 20 chapters sending me numbers all the time, but right now on this graphic we have 422 trees planted, but I'm pretty sure it's above 500 at this point. Um, so that was really awesome, and that was something we planned in 2015. Um, and then we have Ayat Serve, and the goal was to serve 1,008 meals. Um, we actually served 3,066 meals, so we triple time to pass that goal. And it's continuing today. Even our Brazil chapter, they serve 100 meals to the homeless every month. So all of you are really contributing to that, and I thank you so much for that. 
We have our I Have Change goal, um, and this is to set aside money um, every week that we might spend on pizza, we might spend on coffee, cigarettes, hopefully not cigarettes, <laughs> but anything that you wouldn't want to be spending on in excess. Um, excessive item. We're saving that money collectively to put it towards um, AMA schools, Embracing the World schools in Kenya, Haiti, and India. Um, and so our goal was to send 10 children to school. We're currently at 13 children, and I think that's going to update very soon. So that's where we're at today. Last year, so those are the three um, initiatives from 2015. So now we'll get to the 2016 initiatives, which were actually planned in this room um, by you all. So we had I Teach, and that was um, the education, quality education SDG that we voted on. Um, and so I just remember hearing a million voices yelling at me, we don't have, we don't have, um, we don't have values in our education. We don't teach critical thinking skills enough. I just kept hearing that and we were all discussing it. And what we came to was the idea that IUTH chapters should actually hold teach events um, in their own local communities. So calling a school or your local Amrita Balakendra, Embracing the World's um, Young People's Organization, um, which are younger than 13, we had different teach events. And a lot of these taught these children about the SDGs. And I know a lot of us here are learning about the SDGs for the first time, but they're so important. You know, the United Nations came up with them for 2030, and how can we ever accomplish them without all of the young people in this room? So that's been a really big thing for us. We've had more than nine teach events, definitely more. I think it's around 12 now, um, where we've actually taught these children about um, the SDGs. We also had a bioinformatics workshop at Yale University, one of our chapters, so that's been a really great um, initiative that we're still working on today. And then we have IETH Connect. Um, that was another initiative planned last year by you all, and you all said that we not only need to distribute items that help people, um, like sanitary items or things that they might need, um, but we need to make connections with those people. So the idea behind this initiative is to create blessing bags that would, be, that would be filled with items, hygienic products, stickers, personally written notes, stamps, envelopes, pamphlets, anything that you feel your local community, the homeless, the poverty in your local community would need. But not only give them this, make connections with them. So for the past year, we've been making connections in our local community. It might be a little hard to see, but up on the top left, that's Cancun Satsang. Uh, that's the Cancun chapter. Um, in the middle, that's the Rio chapter. Oh, yeah, that's Rio chapter. And on the side, that's our Boston chapter. This is just three of the examples of um, the Connect <laughs> events we've been having. So thank you so much. We've actually made 650 bags. I think that's also increasing. And 260 connections. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> and lastly, but not least, uh, because I'm holding you all to this initiative this year as well. Uh, our idea last year was everyone in I, or we should be able to teach others how to grow their own vegetables, to, to be sustainable. Um, and so we all were thinking like, yeah, let's have these big teach workshops, let's teach people how to grow these vegetables so that they can sustain themselves. But then after a while we were thinking and we're like, we don't even know how to grow vegetables in our own apartments. So we thought, that year we will all grow five vegetables and we will sustain ourselves. And then this year, we can teach them about it. So that's something to think about today that we really wanted to revisit this year, how we can teach others now that we've worked on it for ourselves. So our members are growing um, carrots, basil, watermelon, lemon, cilantro, and they're doing it in a lot of different ways, innovative ways. We, we use hydroponics in Yale University. Um, we've been teaching all around the country, so I just wanted to thank you so much for that, and hopefully this year, we'll work on it again. graphics that we made. Um, they're updates, actually, so uh, every year we're constantly updating, um, and you'll just see all of what I mentioned. Uh, we'll make a new one for this year, so get excited for that. <laughs> so yeah, so today, please, please utilize this time. Um, hear from one another, listen to one another, and really discuss the logistics. I would say, if I were to give any piece of advice based on what I've seen, um, logistics are so important to, you know, we're a massive community, we're all around the world, and in order to have three initiatives that actually are concrete and work throughout the year with 20 plus chapters, we need to work together on all of the fine details. So you'll have around two hours today to really hash out the details, and then we'll have a group 
working later in the night to find, finally draft the resolution, which will be announced um, tomorrow. So please utilize this time well. Um, with that, I'm going to introduce Donia Nasser and Nicole Perez. Um, you met them yesterday, so you all should know them. <laughs> but they are the UN Youth Observers, and they are a key to the UN as well. And they will be leading the ceremonies, so anytime they can just take over. Welcome. <laughs> you guys to turn it up times 10. Are you guys ready for today? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. That's what I like to hear. I am incredibly inspired after hearing about all of the projects that you guys have been working on in the past year. Raise your hand if you were here last year and you took part in all of these projects or in some of these projects. Amazing. I applaud you guys for all of the work that you've done in this past year to take action on things that you saw were either a problem or there was a need in your communities, and you took action to fill that need or help solve that problem. Now raise your hand if this is your first time and you're excited to take part in the action this year. Yes, so I applaud you guys as well because you are here. And that is commendable. And I'm excited to see everything that comes out of this conference today. Um, Donia and I, as youth observers, we represent the voices of American youth at the United Nations. That means that we represent your voices. And you know what that means? That means that you guys today need to speak up. You need to ask questions. You need to voice your opinions because your opinions matter. And um, they're the ones, you guys, are the ones that are going to be leading the changes and are going to be leading the projects and implementing them in your communities. All of these projects that are being thought of at the United Nations, um, you guys are the ones that are going to be the drivers of them. So you have big shoes that you're going to be leading and filling because it's your job and really the job of everybody, but you guys are the ones that are going to be leading. And one of the things we hear often as youth observers is, you know, young people are the leaders of tomorrow, but that's not the way we see it. Young, young people are leaders of today because you guys are the ones that are going to take on everything, all, all of the things that are being thought of at the United Nations. So I'm excited to be here with you guys today. I'm inspired by you, and I want to learn from you guys. Uh, so I'm excited to see what you guys come up with today. Hey, y'all. Uh, how many of you were here when I was here last year? OK. Um, I hope that I have new content for you this year, but I hope also you're excited to see me again, because I'm excited to see you all again. Um, so I'm just gonna build off a little off of what Nicole said. I feel like when I was growing up and when I really wanted to be involved, people always told me that I should just wait my turn because I was too young, or maybe I didn't understand enough because I was too young, or maybe um, you know I needed to wait a couple years to gain some new experiences and then I could come back to the table. And raise your hand if you've felt that maybe you've had limited opportunities because of your age or people have told you that you should wait your turn or maybe disqualify you just based on your age alone. Raise your hand. Yeah. So I think one thing that really unites us today is that your youth is not something that holds you back. It's a gift. It's something that provides a new perspective. When you're at the decision-making table, you're providing a perspective that isn't there before. Um, you know, if Nicole and I have traveled and we've been the youngest person in the room, which is often the case, we're providing a lens and a perspective that is completely different, but it's necessary. How can we make decisions um, that affect young people if young people aren't contributing to those decisions? There are over 1.6 billion youth in the world. So we are a huge, like, important force, and we really should claim our power. And, you know, I always say, don't just demand your right to the table. Don't just claim your right at the table. You, don't, you have to demand it. You demand a seat at the table because you belong at the decision-making tables that are affecting your life personally. Whether it's something like I'm passionate about gender equality, whether you're passionate about climate change or any other issues, 
your voice matters and today we want to give you a little bit of that we want to make sure that you leave here today feeling that your voice matters and that you can actually make a difference because you can trust us you can so before we introduce our distinguished uh, panelists and speakers I want to take the time to uh, recognize the young people that are here that are not just participating in this event, but that have helped put this event together. From the amazing food that you, we all have been fed in the last couple of days, um, to all of the preparation that has gone in to make this event a reality, let's give an incredible round of applause to everybody. So um, now Tonya will introduce our speakers. Okay, Nicole, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to say this, handed this off to me because she said that um, she looked at the names and was a little frightened. So I'm, I'm gonna try my best, okay? <laughs> Please don't laugh. Actually, you can laugh, you can laugh, if I mess up. All right, so we have six distinguished guests today to start with. Swami Ramakrishna Nanda Puri. <laughs> Okay, Brahmachari Shantamrita Chaitanya. <laughs> Malvika Iyer. <laughs> Lucia Riker. <laughs> Shatila Van Grinsman. <laughs> Sienna Nordquist. <laughs> Mohammed Khader. And of course, Nicole Perez. And you know me, Donia. Hi. Hey. Hey. Okay. So we're gonna start. Okay, we're gonna start with Malika. Round of applause for Malika. I'm, this is the first time I'm attending a youth parliament, so I'm really excited. It's, I also want to learn because I've read so much about it and when I found out that I'm going to be a panelist here, so I thought that, I mean, everyone, all of us, you know, there are like so many issues and we all have uh, one issue that's always close to our heart and I think I thought I will take this opportunity to talk about the issue that is closest to my heart and something that I'm working on, something that I'm living with and uh, I want to highlight, uh, I mean, I will start by talking about uh, the challenges that are faced by people with disabilities and men, women, uh, children, all of them and what are the varied challenges that I came across and the kind of challenges that uh, you would be shocked to hear and uh, what SDGs can you uh, implement and what are, in what way can you be a part of it as an activist? In what way can you help? And I can maybe connect you to the challenge and the SDG and let's find out that how we can work towards making this world a more inclusive place to be. So let me start by highlighting, uh, to begin with, we know that uh, I think the disabled population in this world is around 15% of us. And that's a huge number, 15% of population representing people who are you know, differently able. And we should know for the fact that not all differently able people are the same and everyone has different needs and they have different limitations and lim different barriers. So for a person with invisible disability, their barriers might be completely different. For a person with physical disability, it might be completely different. So we need to understand that they are not a uniform group and they each have their unique issues and challenges and we need to understand that. And for the first challenge that I want to highlight is the aspect of inclusive education. I come from India and I have a very, um, I mean this example that I'm going to share with you is, I, it shocked me when I found out about it first. I was doing my PhD research and I was interviewing people with disabilities and I talk, talked to them about how inclusive has their experience been in terms of education and workplace. And this one person who was, uh, who was on a wheelchair, she shared that uh, her classroom, the first time when she, her par along with her parents, she went to a school to enroll for uh, uh, admission, 
They said that the classrooms are in the third floor of the building, and she, she since she 